Hello! You caught me at the right time. I just finished packing my bags and I'm making my way to Pulau Batu Bulat. And then to a small village called Kampung Kecil. Have you heard of it before? Yes. How about you? No. Ah, it's okay. Well then, I guess I will need to tell you more about Pulau Batu Bulat and tell you about how special it is to me. I love this island because even though I'm not from there, it has brought me many special memories. Well, I have been there many times after that. Let's go. Let me tell you about the first time that I was there. I was a young little boy, no more than 12 years old. My parents thought that it would be a good idea if we visited their old village and experienced the life there. I was not looking forward to it. Eee, it would be so boring. There will be no television, no computers, no entertainment whatsoever. And then the next week, for seven days, we'll be there. That's an eternity. Well. I wasn't looking forward to it ever. Nevertheless, we made our way there. At first, we needed to take a ferry to a small island and then take the rickshaw and then take a smaller boat to Pulau Batu Bulat. The boat? Oh my. It was the first time that I was there. It was choppy. The winds were howling. The rain was coming down on us. And I felt sick. When we arrived there, the sights, the sound, and the smell, they were unfamiliar to me. Nevertheless, we were in Pulau Batu Bula. The first thing that struck me was the paddy fields. It was such a sight. They were as vast as the eyes can see. In the background of this, the vision of clouds was massive, undisrupted by buildings of any sorts. You don't see people rushing around chasing for time with their eyebrows frowned and their steps hasty. And everybody was smiling. At first, it was really difficult to adjust. I was not used to the toilet situation and there was no hot water. Every morning at 5.30, we will make the dawn prayer. We will head down to the well, pull ourselves a bucket of cold water, and then we'll pour it over ourselves. And the first drop of water was so, 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 so cold. It was torture. It was torture, I tell you. But then... It was all right after that. Anyway, since I'm here, let me take a bath for the eighth time in a day. See ya! At night, the streets would be dark. Very dark. I was scared of the dark. And another stressful thing was avoiding Cow dung at night. Torchlights did not work to illuminate the possible threats lying around on the ground like minesweepers uh, of awful smell and slimy sensation on your feet. My father said there are two ways to deal with cow dung. One is to have a torch in hand and shining it down on the ground. Second is to have a stick and poking it down on the ground. But sometimes, ever so often, you might put your feet knee-deep in cow dung! Ah! How would it be?
be like for you? Would you have enjoyed an experience like that? Taking cold baths with well water, trying to avoid cow dung, riding boats. How would it be like for you? When I was there at that time, it was weird. And then I thought to myself, maybe for the people living in Pulau Batu Bulat, it was an everyday life thing. And maybe if they lived in my house, in your house, they would feel that it is weird too. Well, I guess we experience something new every day in our lives. And one thing I enjoyed experiencing when I was at Pulau Batu Bulat was playing in the fields. You see, Pulau Batu Bulat was vast. It was huge. The fields were wide, the clouds were singing to me, and one of the activities that I loved to do was to disturb the cows. Ooh. Meow. Meow. But every time I try to disturb them, they would just look at me with blank eyes as if, Hey, what are you trying to do? <laughs> One thing I love, that I enjoyed, that I learned for the second time in my life was to ride a bicycle. You see, the first time I tried riding on a bicycle, it failed. I had cuts on my knees, cuts on my elbows, and a huge cut on my face. And then I didn't want it to, do, do, to do it again. You see, sometimes when you try to do something and you fail, you don't, don't have the motivation to do it. So, I spoke to my father. He said, it's okay. When you're ready, you will try again. So that was it. When we were at Pulau Batu Bulat, I plucked the courage and tried riding a bicycle one more time. When I was on the bicycle, ooh, the wind was in my hair. I was looking at all the beautiful things in Pulau Batu Bulat. While I was riding down a hill, my father was a few miles away from me. But in front of me, there was a girl. I was trying to find a way to avoid her. She was just standing there. I didn't know where she came from. She just popped out. She, she was crying out. Putu piring, putu piring. I look to the left. Towards the left, I see a huge house. Oh, if I were to go straight into that house, mm, 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 the bicycle and me would look like nothing. I look to the right. There was a bush. The girl was in the middle. I aim for the right. And as I cycle harder and harder, I said, Sorry! <sighs> Thankfully, I did not hit her, but she did fall. Oh man, I felt so bad, embarrassed and scared. What do you think I should have done? Should I have uh, stopped and helped her? Do you think she would scold me? What do you think she feels? Hmm. What would you have done if you were in my shoes? You know, I wish I could say sorry to her, but I did not. She must have felt scared or even hurt. From then on, every time I ride on a bicycle, I would check the brakes, put on the helmet and not go so fast. That was one of the many stories of Pulau Batu Bulat that I have. This beautiful island. The experience was short but rich. This was just one of many, many stories that happened on the little island of Pulau Batu Bulat. Who knows? Maybe you might hear another one soon. Or maybe you can come and join me and we can go to Pulau Batu Bulat together. It's somewhere over there, across the sea, full of stories for you and me to enjoy. I'll see you there. Maybe. Bye.